Our goal now is to implement the logic for the memory game. So when I tap on a memory card, I should be able to flip it over. And also, there should be some logic to check if two cards that are flipped over are matched. This is an interesting challenge, and you'll find that if you break it down case by case, the code actually becomes quite simple. So in mainactivity.kotlin, we have a log statement here for when the card has been clicked. And so I'm going to delete that, and let's actually delegate the work of this into a method called update game with flip at this position. All right, and the idea here is that this method is responsible for updating the memory game with an attempted flip at this position. All right, and so we're going to just delegate the work here into the memory game. And so in order to reference memory game, I need to make this a uh, property of the class. So create property memory game. And it'll be a late init var. So late init because we know that memory game is going to be initialized properly, but it will only happen on create. So that's why we're going to add this as late init. And then one other variable that I would like to make into a property is the adapter. So we're going to split the assignment and the declaration of the variable. And then we're going to define another variable, which is a property of the class called adapter. And this is of type memory board adapter. So now we can reference adapter from multiple methods and not just the onCreate method. So in the update game with flip, the memory game itself should be responsible for handling what happens in the state of the game when the memory card at this position is flipped. We're going to create a method on the memory game class called flip card, and it'll take in an uh, integer parameter called position. And our studio will help us to create it. And then I'll put this down here. Here is the game logic that we're going to write. To start out with, just to make this simple, why don't we simply change the value of the is face up property of this card? So I'm going to grab the card at this position, save that into a variable called card. And then we're just going to say card dot is face up is the opposite of what it was. So if it was face down before, it's going to be face up. If it was face up, it's going to be face down because the user is flipping it over. And so once we've flipped the card, then we need to tell the recycler view adapter that the contents of what it's showing has changed. And so we should update itself. And the way you do that is you say adapter dot notify data set changed. Let's try it. So now if I tap on any of these, you can see that there's underlying image resource is shown. And I can go back and forth as well. So I can toggle between them. So now let's think a little bit more about what exactly should happen when the user attempts to flip over a card. So for example, if I restart the game, if I flip over this card, and let's just pick another one like this, the next card I flip over should automatically flip back to the default state the two cards that are currently flipped over. And so the memory game has to have some, some state or some notion of which cards have been previously flipped over um, and which have not. And as soon as I flip over another card now, both of these should have gone back down to face down. And if you think a little bit more about this, it really comes down to exactly three cases. So first is there were zero cards previously flipped over. Second is there was exactly one card previously flipped over. And the third valid case is there are two cards previously flipped over. This is the totality of what is possible in a valid memory game. You can never ever have three cards flipped over at once. So now let's go case by case and figure out how the memory game should be updated. When there were zero cards previously flipped over, all we need to do is simply flip over that card. There's no need to flip over any other cards in the game, and there's no way a match could be found yet because after this turn is over, only one card will be flipped over, but you need two in order to make a match. Moving on to the next case, if there was one card previously flipped over, we will always flip it over, but we also now want to check whether the two cards that are going to now be flipped over, if they match. And if they do match, we want to indicate to the user at the UI layer that the match has been found, and we no longer want to allow these cards to be selected or flipped over again. And finally, in the third case, when there were two cards previously flipped over, we first want to restore the cards and make them face down again. 
And then we want to take the card at this selected position that the user tapped on and flip that card over. So if you can understand these three cases, then the rest of the logic is pretty straightforward. And one thing I can do to make this even simpler is you'll notice that this case, when there are zero cards flipped over or there are two cards flipped over, they're actually identical. And the reason is because I could just copy over the same statement, restore cards plus flip over selected card into the first case. And the idea here is that if there were no cards flipped over previously, then this restore cards is essentially a no op, so it has no impact. And then we will flip over, over the selected card. And so we've reduced these three cases down into two cases. That means the only information we need to distinguish between these two cases is if there was one card previously flipped over, and in particular, the position of that one card, because we'll need that in order to check if the images match. This is the key insight. And so what we're going to do is have a variable here called private var index of single selected card. And the type of this variable will be a nullable int with initial value of null, because when you make a new memory game, there is no single selected card. So now we can actually start hooking this state up into the flip card method. So if the index of the single selected card is null, what does that mean? That means that there were either zero cards previously flipped over or there were two cards previously flipped over. So in this case, like we broke down here in the pseudocode, the first thing we want to do is restore the cards. And then the second thing we want to do is update the single selected card to be this flipped card, right? So we'll say index of single selected card is now equal to this position that was flipped over. So let's define this method, restore cards. And this turns out to be fairly easy. We'll just iterate through the list of all cards that we have. And we want to set the is face up to be false, which basically means turn everything back to the default state. There's one caveat here though, which is that if the card has been matched, then we don't want to do that, right? So we only want to set the card to be face up if the card is not matched. So I'm going to add exclamation mark here and say, okay, if the card is not matched, then restore it to its default state. Awesome. So in the else condition, this is when we have exactly one card previously flipped over. So now as per our pseudocode, we need to flip over the card and then check if the images match. And so let's write that logic, add a method here, check for match. And we're going to pass into this method two positions on the board, on the memory board. And the objective is that this function will return to us true or false on whether those two positions on the board are identical images or not. The first parameter will be index of single selected card and the second will be position. And this is going to return to us whether we found a match or not. So let's define this method, check for match. So the first parameter can just be position one and the second can be position two and the return type will be a boolean on whether a match is found or not. So if the card at position one, if the identifier of that is not equal to the identifier at position two, then we know that the user has picked incorrectly. These two cards are not a match. However, if these cards do match, then we need to update the state of those cards to be is matched is equal to true because now we found the pair. The user has found the pair, so we should set is matched to be equal to true. And if this happens, we want to update this variable num pairs found and increment it. And then let's re return true. Wait, let's see what is the issue we're happening here. So num pairs found, we defined it as a val, and it actually should be a var because that will change over time. Okay, and then there's one more error here saying that smart cast to int is impossible because index of selected card is a mutable property. In order to force this to be a non-null int, I can just use a double exclamation mark to tell the call and compiler to not worry about this. And the last thing we need to do here is that if we get into the else branch, which means there was exactly one card previously flipped over, after the user has finished flipping the card, then there will no longer be exactly one card flipped over. 
And so we need to set index of single selected card to be null. And the reason I wanted to save this found match variable is I would like flip card to return to us a Boolean on whether a match was found or not. And so I'm going to define a variable up here called var found match. And this is initially going to be false. And then it might turn true when the user has flipped over two cards and we're checking the value. And then here we're going to return the value of found match. Before testing this out, one more thing I want to do is in the check for match method, if our logic is correct, we will now set the Boolean property is matched when cards are indeed matched. And so back in the memory board adapter, we can use that information to update the UI appropriately. In the bind method, based on whether the memory card is matched or not, we will set the alpha property of the image button view. So the alpha value refers to the opacity, how visible is the, the image button. And so if the memory card is matched, we'll set it equal to a lower value, 0.4, in order to fade it out and make it less prominent. And the F here stands for float, which is a different kind of number compared to an integer. And in the else condition, we will set the value to 1.0, which is a default full bleed opacity. And one more thing we can do here is if the memory card is matched, then we can change the background of matched cards to be a little bit grayed out. And the way you can do that is I can say context compat dot get color state list context r dot color dot color gray and we're going to define what that is else null so this is now going to be a color state list and we're going to call this method view compat dot set background tint list image button color state list. The idea here is that the set background tint list is a way to set a background or shading onto the image button. And so if the image is matched, we're going to have a gray background, which we create using context compat that get color state list with the gray color. And that will be one more visual indication to the user that this card has been matched. So let's now define this color resource. So I'll have Android Studio help me to create a color value resource, color gray. And the value is going to be this gray color, EO times three. Tap on OK. And just to show you what that did, if we command click or control click on color gray, it added one more line into the color of the XML with the color that we picked. All right, let's try it. And looks like we have an error here invalid color, and I think I just forgot the hash symbol here. All right, let's try this one more time. So I'm just gonna flip over a card, flip over one more, and in this case, these cards don't match. So we don't apply the different UI effect of cards being matched, but now the here's the real test. When I flip over a next card, both of these cards should go back to being flipped over. Let's see if that happens. Okay, awesome. So you can see that both of these did go back, and now we are flipping over exactly one card. So we're playing a valid game of memory now. Let's see if I can find a match. So here's a house and the other house was here. So there you can see that we found a match and that resulted in us having this gray background color applied to the button and the alpha value goes down to 0.4. So this is a nice way of telling the user that these cards have been matched already. All right, we found one more match. And one more thing I want to try here now is both of these cards are flipped over. Let's say now I actually try to tap on this graduation cap one more time. Now that's a little bit weird. It actually led to this memory card being flipped back to the state and this one stays flipped over. The correct thing to do here is not allow the user to make this invalid move. So let's try this one more time. So if I click this card again, we're kind of in this bad state now where the user is able to tap on something which shouldn't be a valid move in memory. That is what we're going to handle in this update game with flip method. So here we need to do some error handling. There are two errors that can happen. One is if we've won the memory game, and second is if that memory card is already face up. So first, if we've won the game of memory, this is gonna be a method defined on the memory class on the memory game class, then we want to return because this move isn't valid. So we want to maybe alert the user. 
And the other error case is if the card at that position is already face up. And then same thing. In that case, we want to tell the user that this what they're trying to do is invalid and then return early. So let's define ha have one game. So this is pretty straightforward because we know how many pairs have been found. That's this variable here, num pairs found. So we know we've won the game when the number of pairs is exactly equal to the total number of pairs that should be in this board. So we'll say board size dot get num pairs. Let's also define this is card face up method. And again, this is pretty straightforward. All we need to do here is grab the cart at that position and check the value of is face up. So in order to check if this actually worked, I would like to show some UI when either of these things happen. And the way we can do this is by using a snack bar. The so snack bar is an Android component which shows up at the bottom of the screen and you can use it as a way to message to the user about something. So I'm gonna say snack bar dot make and we need to pass in a, a view here the root view I'll call this CL root and I'll define that in just a little bit that you already won and then we need to find a length here snack bar dot length long and then show it and then if the card is face up then invalid here we need to define the root element on which this snack bar will be anchored. And that's pretty easy to do. All we want to do is go into the activity main and this CL root is going to refer to the constraint layout, the very root element. So I'll give this an ID of CL root, go into main activity and let's define that up here. It's subtype constraint layout. And then we need to Add it right here. CL root is equal to find view by ID r dot ID CL root. Okay, so hopefully the error has went away with the snack bar. Awesome. Let's try running this one more time. All right, I flip over a card. Let's try flipping over the card one more time. And you can see invalid move, which is great. So in a in an actual game of memory, you shouldn't be allowed to flip over the same card twice. So we have to flip over one more card after we flip this one over. Awesome. So if I do the same thing, that's invalid. And let's actually play the game. Okay, now we've won. So now at this point, we shouldn't be allowed to flip over any card, right? So if I tap on any card, you can see that we get that snack bar. You already won. So just to review, what we're doing here is in the update game with flip method, the user is attempting to flip a card at, the, at this position in the recycler view. And we're doing some error checking to begin with. And then down here, we're actually flipping over the card. And this flip card method returns a boolean now. So I'm going to capture that. Let's put a log statement here indicating that we found a match. And let's also print out the number of pairs that the user has found so far. And that data will come from the property num pairs found on the memory game. This is the core game logic for playing memory. So if you have any questions or you're confused about anything, drop a comment and I'm happy to help as much as possible. In the next part, we're going to update the text views at the bottom of the screen in order to show how the game is progressing. If you're still with me, hit that like button to let me know and subscribe so you know when the next part comes out. I'll see you all soon.